distracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Dell World 2015. Brought to you by Dell. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are back here at Dell World 2015. This is theCUBE. Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante, CUBE alum, Marius Haas, Chief Commercial Officer, President of Dell Enterprise. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks well, for coming. Thank I know you've got a tight great schedule. Again. Great to see you. No, it's wonderful. It's always great to be with you all. Great afternoon. I remember when I uh, first did an interview with you when you were at HP, I did a podcast for like 2007 or 8, I forget what year it was. You just bought 3Com, okay? And it's a mega merger for HP. This is a monster kind of deal that you guys have done here at Dell, and, the, and it's just pretty amazing that since around 2010, 11, 12, Dell has been acquiring some serious management team, okay? Michael goes private. I mean, three years ago, we saw him at the party, standing alone, me and Dave, said, you got to smile, you're going to go party, you're going to be a happy man. I tell you, one of the key reasons I came here is to help build a world-class enterprise franchise with Michael, and I think we are doing it. Uh, now we even at a much higher stage, so uh, we're excited. The capabilities that we bring, that come to the table here as part of the portfolio with our new friends at EMC, but also VMware and the whole, uh, the whole solution set that it represents, for customers, it's, uh, I'd say, a dream come true. There's, there's two perspectives on this m and thing that I look at I want to share with you, and one is, you know, the, he who dies with the most toys wins is one kind of philosophy of acquiring <laughs> things, and then the other one is, you know, entrepreneurial, and I kind of mm -hmm. tweeted out, this is Michael's 50th year, he's 50 years old like me, Michael Dell 5.0. I mean, this is, he's got an entrepreneurial spirit here. So you can see from his keynote, yep. it's not the former. It's like, I'm going to build stuff, something again. It's certainly an entrepreneurial vibe. Well, Share I, I, what I, that is going on and how that translates to an operation that's already thrown up, as he said, 900 billion in revenue since he started the company. How does he go from here? Why well, I think one of the key things and why he's still the key icon within the industry is the fact that he's always had this philosophy about change or die. Right, so what do we need to do? What do we as a company need to do differently to be relevant within all size enterprises? And clearly this is a, uh, a pretty darn big statement about how we can bring together great intellectual property to better serve customers and help solve their business problems. And as you heard this morning, these business problems are only becoming more and more complex. How, what do we do to simplify that for them? How do we enable them to consume and drive an extremely agile infrastructure so they can provision on the fly to deliver the workloads for their internal constituencies as well as for their external customers. Uh, and do it uh, in a very simplistic way, which is something that we've always strived to do. What's your take on what's going on in the enterprise IT business? HP splitting up, IBM's paying companies to take its microelectronics business, Dell goes private, smaller companies like Informatica and BMC are going private, and now this mega merger, what's happening? Why well, I think you know something that Michael mentioned several times is that we believe that our largest customers and actually customers of all sizes are looking for fewer partners to deliver better value and more value to them holistically. Everything from old IT to new IT. So the more we can enable and bring together the, the capabilities that then we translate into how do we solve business problems, the better off we become as, as creating value for them. So for us, it's the velocity of, of, of transferring value from technology to business and enabling our customers to do that. So that's been a yeah. big push, and we think the consolidation in the industry will continue to happen, clearly seeing it happen in the PC space. So in the areas where there is heavy commoditization, it's going to yeah. continue to happen. You saw some of the announcements today with SanDisk being, yeah. being bought by Western Digital. 19 billion, it, big It's number. another big M&A deal. So I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> this year is one of the biggest M&A years within the banking, uh, yeah. with the banking uh, M&A service Huge providers. consolidation. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. So the two questions that come up is one, how do you pay for it all, right, with money? And it's a lot of cash, 67 billion. I mean, just put your arms around, just the numbers, mind blowing. Um, so, you know, you, you guys are a financial engineer, Mike David Goulden at the EMC, same thing. Where's the cash come from? Is it going to come from uh, existing products? Is it going to be from operations? I mean, you guys are privately held. You don't have to go to Wall Street and disclose anything, but like, you see enough revenue and this cash flow throwing off and it's going to be funded. And well, I, I think the, the market a, a is very excited about this opportunity and the value it creates for customers and how we can do that. Big part of it is, to your point, how do you secure the funding to get a transaction of this size done, largest IT transaction in history, 
all that secured, and we were oversubscribed. Yeah. Right? You can imagine when you have partners like um, uh, Silver Lake. It's cost of capital equation. part of that? So, Silver Lake is a, uh, obviously one of the best in yeah. financial engineering of deals. Uh, with tremendous respect for them. Spent some time at KKR, so <laughs> I know uh, things that they <laughs> can do. Reminds me of the do. 80s, right? <laughs> and, 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 and certainly they're a tremendous partner to this equation, providing significant advice. Uh, and we certainly think that we've done some pretty unique things here. Yeah. Um, a tracking stock structure, which has never been done in the history of M&A, and the ability to pull that off, be able to make sure you provide the best capital structure in a deal of this size, um, is, uh, is pretty exciting. We were, I was pretty bullish on the Twitter when I saw the news, Dave and I had a crowd chat, it was really robust. Yeah, a lot of product, product overlaps, but as Joe Tucci said, better have overlaps than gaps, and EMC's got a lot of overlaps, but that's a whole other question. But the, the thing, when we look at the mega mergers, the ones that have worked and not worked, you kind of look at the trend, the pattern. And I want to get your take on your opinion on this. My comment was, the ones that work are founder-led. So the integration really gets driven through. Mm -hmm. The other ones had transient CEOs, maybe the instruments might not be right on the financial side, or market conditions. Here, the cost of capital's got low. You got founder at the helm. Mm -hmm. IT's changing. Well, I, the, Put some uh, color uh, around uh, that. As you know my background, I've, yeah. been, I've been in many of these big transformational transactions throughout my career. What's the pattern? And I'll, I'll tell you, I think you're exactly right. Where there, where there uh, creates a lot of management churn, what happens is the institutional knowledge kind of goes away. And, the, and, 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 then, and so what's critically important and what's exciting about this engagement is, is that we have an extremely strong EMC uh, management team. Um, they're going to be leading the enterprise group going forward. You have obviously a very strong uh, VMware contingency, plus Pivotal and the other assets that we have. And of course, we have an amazing, talented executive team at Dell. What are you going to do? Yeah, there's plenty of work. <laughs> to be able to do, trust me. There's plenty of work. You know, one of the things <laughs> I, I think this is what Michael, gonna, what, you know, this is what Michael said at, at our town hall meeting. We had Joe Tucci and Michael come in, and we did a town hall. On Tuesday, you were the, the day host. After, I read the I transcript. The host. That's right. Good job. And, and <laughs> one of the words Michael said is that it's an all-you-can-eat work environment. Yeah. So, uh, I, I think. We'll yeah. And if busy. you're an executor, you're going to do well. If you're a hider, you know, you're going to you're going to flounder you in know, this environment. This I mean, is, it's going to expose a lot what of. I, what I've learned in, in, in my experience is, is um, when, when we did the HP Compact merger, I wanted to jump in. Right? Yeah. So it's really an environment where yeah. you want to make sure you are part of. Yeah. How do you design and be part of the future of the company? And then those those core executives need to be part of the go forward model. Make sure that they yeah. then are responsible. There's a lot for of work to do. A lot of execution in the management side of things, strategic and tactical. But what's an innovation but, strategy but, but, and a but, tactical but, strategy? But what's exciting is is that the receptivity from the customer base has been enormous. We are already receiving calls today from EMC customers that are now opening the doors that for us had been tough to get into. I, so it is, uh, it's, yeah. it's exciting. You're and, number and one. I mean, 22 markets, he said, by Gardner's Magic Quadrant. I, I, mean, that's I, pretty I, significant. I don't think that yeah, anyone that is in, in, the, in the mode of wanting to move their organization forward, wanting to move into the new IT ecosystem, will call us and People want us scared, to be though. part People get scared though. People Myers. People do get scared, right? You, you also know there's also some, you know, shaving of some things that go on in these deals to kind of shape the new order, which might require some layoffs and things. But people are always afraid. So, Expand on the, on the philosophy that you guys have. Like you said, it's an all-you-can-eat environment. Yep. What's the message to the employee base and to the market? Well, the, big, the biggest part here is, is, is our belief is that the revenue synergies, positive revenue synergies of us coming together with an amazing enterprise sales force, with a phenomenal mid-market sales organization, with great IP, we will be able to move forward. We will be able to grow this engine extremely well. And, and, and to my point earlier, with the feedback that we're already getting, we believe that we're absolutely on the right track. So talk more about that, that feedback. Yeah. Um, add some color to that. Uh, what, are, what are people saying? What are, what are the, the senior level IT execs saying about the merger? Well, the, the, um, I'll give you an example. So at the, at the largest end of the accounts, um, obviously EMC has built a, a very yeah, good huge. reputation, very good relationships with the C-suite within that account base. When you have the ability to partner at that level and influence decision making around architecture strategies, that is a that's a that's an that's an important capability that we were building, but to be honest, would have taken us too long to build organically to get to that level. So this clearly allows us to move into that relationship space um, with the full suite of capabilities that Dell has in the mix. 
Um, and then from our reach within the mid-market space, clearly how can we help the EMC portfolio, the rest of the VMware portfolio come through and be more pervasive across the board around the architecture solutions that we deliver into the mid-market space. That's why it's so, um, so complementary, if you will, from a, from a go-to-market customer coverage perspective, relationship building perspective, but also from a portfolio so side. So if I were you guys, and I had to run this thing, <laughs> we do this I would say, yeah, we're, we're here to we, listen. Okay, so, so we, we got we limited, input. we have limited R&D, we have big R&D, but it's limited. So let's take the pieces that aren't growing, and let's elongate the product life cycle, let's maybe slow down you know, the cycles of, of, of innovation there and put it over here where the growth is. With a new maybe let's is. bump up the maintenance a little bit and then we'll, let's be transparent about it. So we're going to do, because we're going to put our investment over here. Is that a fair way to think about this? I think that's a very fair way to think about it. I, th I think it's one of the, the core pieces of this is, you know, we clearly understand where the businesses are. We clearly understand the balance between how do you take existing businesses, how do you take growth businesses, how do you make sure you have the right balance to invest in the growth businesses. And uh, you should assume that we'll be doing, taking a look, real hard look at all those levers as part of uh, this equation. We've already launched our integration team. We've taken two of our best and brightest and Rory Reid on the Dell side and Howard Elias on the EMC side. Executives that are uh, 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 unbelievable Howard's reputation really amazing, in the yeah. market. Uh, Rory, gonna, they know how to do integration. They know how to get true. things done. And uh, we've aligned them already with teams from both sides in all the disciplines. And they are, I know already yesterday had a four hour kickoff face to face. So they're moving. Marius, for the folks out there that don't have the history in the M&A market, I want to ask you two things. Give some color to the kind of revolutionary sides of this transaction in terms of vis-a-vis -vis other deals, even going back into the 80s, and kind of why now this kind of transaction can happen. And then talk about like how do you balance this new era of being superbly innovative, trying to be innovative and disruptive at the same time, disruptive from a cost perspective. That's what Michael laid out. We want to lower cost, efficient, have efficiencies, lower cost, and be innovative at the same time. So there's two major dynamics that are hard to do at the same time. Yep. So the M&A color, uh, historically, to the uh, new dynamics. Well, I think the, the, the notion of industry consolidation, um, we've all talked about it for a long time. And there was plenty of rumors for multiple years going, various different assets around the industry. This one, this one, what would be best matches, what would be the opportunity? We felt as though now was, was as good as any other time in the history to help drive that. So we would rather be in the driver's seat, make it happen, than have someone else do it to us. Versus what, three years of little deals and like uh, Look, There's always along. value in adding intellectual yeah. property into yeah. your portfolio, but you know, being able to do a, a, a deal that has a material Tidal wave. Of, yeah. it, it, it generates a lot of momentum, <laughs> yeah, and again, is there is some overlap, but it's yeah. actually very little. Um, we, you know, to your point, we've done a lot in, in moving up the stack, in delivering more and more enterprise class capabilities across the board in servers, in storage, and in networking. But we've always done it with the same philosophy of how do we translate value to customers quicker. Which means, in those areas where there is commoditization, guess what? We know that we're perfectly fine driving that. Um, because that's otherwise, Dell's, that's Dell's some mantra. They've done that many years. Forever. And, and so the, the expectation and why there's such a gravitational pull from customers now wanting for us to come in is because that core competency that we have in delivering value back to yeah. them, it, it, they can see how that will translate going forward. Enabling that to what Michael said, how do you rebalance the, the investment and maintenance of infrastructure to investment and innovation? And certainly, you uh, nine you know, months to get it done. I know you got to go, <laughs> but my last question is: the great thing about being private is you can write your own narrative, or you know, or Amazon as part, you know, AWS part of a larger public company. What's the narrative that you want to convey about your business? Look, it's a whole new chapter in the enterprise business, in the enterprise space. I, but the capabilities that we now bring to, bring together as one team, one organization, is uh, has never been done before at that scale. Um, and again, I, if you then tie it back to our core competencies and be able to serve an enterprise market and a mid-market with a strong partner yeah. channel ecosystem, we'll be able to reach um, you know, what is a three plus billion dollar, trillion dollar TAM extremely And that might be underestimated when we look at IOT as well, by the way. Uh, so the, everything's yeah. on, the chips are on the table on the market, new markets are exploding, 
New game changing deal. It's all down deal. to execution, right? Which is what you said from the beginning. So uh, we, you know, I think we've got a pretty solid track record of being yeah. able to do that. And we're certainly going to bring that cadence uh, into the mix here. Well, we certainly love the deal. It certainly creates a lot of action for our media <laughs> business. We really appreciate all the entertainment and we'll be documenting uh, all the trials and tribulations along the way. This is Marius Haas, CUBE alumni, uh, senior manager here, senior executive at Dell, now Dell EMC and everything else. New chapter in IT. Marius, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your insight with us. I really appreciate it. Gentlemen, Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Thank you very always. much. We'll be right Good back with you. more uh, CUBE at Dell World after this short break. <laughs>